John Smith gave me a very brief comment on the Dragonfly Black 1.5 and Red review. Deckport Slim slash HD. Three questions. Am I monitored by the NSA or are there really people with that name? And is the Deckport HD indeed a good alternative? Let's find out. Sentence built an impressive track record in only 16 years for doing digital audio mobile or at least transportable. And most often aimed at headphone users. As you might know, I am not much of a headphone listener, but I found several DA converters headphone amplifiers to be very good DA converters for use in a regular stereo. That's the angle at which I look at the Deckport HD2. The DAC port has an aluminum housing measuring 75 by 28 by 10 mm. On one side it holds a micro USB input and a thumb wheel on a corner with the same contours as a thumb wheel. A nice way of keeping the volume control out of harm's way. The opposite side holds the 3.5 mm headphone jack and along the long side there is a two position 20 dB gain switch that will normally be in the high position except for when highly sensitive in-ears are used. The Deckport HD is USB Audio Profile 2 compatible so it will play on all computers without a driver, save Windows computers that need the driver that's available at the Deckport.com website. Electronic components get more compact by the day and deck chips more advanced. The Asahi Kasei AK4490EQ DAC chip used here is a 256 times oversampling converter that accepts any sampling rate between 30 and 768 kHz, a bit depth up to 32 bits and does both PCM and DSD. Not that the DAC port HD uses this all, it does sampling frequencies between 44.1 and 384 kHz, more than sufficient for me. The deck chip is preceded by an Exmos USB interface and separate crystal oscillators are used for 44.1 and 48 kHz and their multiples. They are specified at better than 10 ppm and 1 ps jitter. The analog audio rails are plus or minus 9 volts. Since USB power is only 5 volts they use a DC to DC converter. That analog audio has no capacitors in its class A audio circuit. All in all more than you would expect from such a small device and obviously designed by people with audio DNA. The build quality is somewhat less as can be seen by the large quantities of solder. Given the size of the PCB I don't expect any problems but I haven't seen this for a long time. On the positive side again, they made a wise choice when selecting the reconstruction filter. It has no pre-echo and is dimensioned to prevent overloads due to filtering. Filters almost always overshoot which, it, which isn't the problem unless the signal is at 0 dBFS at its loudest in plain English, for then there is no value higher than 0 dBFS. When you play a 1 kHz square wave at 0 dBFS it should look like this and that's exactly what the Deckport HD does. But when we look at what the dragonflies make of it, you can clearly see that the waveform seems to hit some ceiling. This is a measurement of the red but the black does the same. It's not shocking and it doesn't make the dragonflies useless, it's just one of those measurements that prove that there are reasons why some devices sound better than others. So let's report on the listening. Since I always listen before I do the tech, the DAC port HD really surprised me. There are many audio manufacturers and basically they all shop at the same places for components. Given the budget there is not that much to vary. If you then know that the DAC port HD is built in the States and not in Asia, you don't expect that product to be better than others. 
but it does sound better. The New Force Micro Deck 3 and the Dragonfly Red are both nice converters for the money, really, but the DAC port HD does outperform them both. The mid-range is more open, sibilance control is really better, it has a wider and deeper stereo image with the instruments being more in focus and a sound that is more relaxed. The high-end lingo creeps out <laughs> automatically with these kinds of products. I'm sorry, if you don't get the idea, the sound is less mechanical, less listening to a radio. Now let me put that in perspective, since someone really asked me what was better, the Dragonfly Red or the Chord Mojo. That's like asking what's better, a Kia Picanto or a Golf GTI. Don't get me wrong, the man was right to ask, for he couldn't scale the difference. It was I that apparently wasn't clear enough. I know this is going to cause problems, but if the Micro Deck 3 is at 85% and the Red is at about 100%, the DAC port HD is at 130% and the Mojo at 300%. For the Mojo you can say well it costs 300% so that makes sense, but the DAC port HD costs the same as the RED. Get my point? So it's sounding great, has great technology given its price and I had some comments on the soldering. Is that all? No. The other thing you should know is that the power consumption of the DAC port HD is too high to use it with for instance an iPhone. My El Cheapo measuring device indicated 0.13 amps. I don't care for I wouldn't use it connected to my uh, iPhone but to my computers and that works fine. As long as you have your own micro USB to USB cable for it comes without it. I wouldn't care less that the packing looks like it's designed by someone with audio DNA and not a package designer. But who cares? You throw it away anyway. And you have to download the manual from DACPort.com. Again who cares? A paper version gets lost after a week, so a tree died in vain. And what's there to explain about using the DACPort HD anyway? If you're like me and go for the best sound for the money, this might be the right choice, unless there's another product even better, in which, which case you should let me know, just as John Smith did. Still not sure about that name. Developments go quick and I do my best to keep you informed, so subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my questions video to find out why. The link is in the top right corner. You find more information below this video on YouTube. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next video or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.